Just four light years away from Earth sits the closest exoplanet that scientists have discovered, Proxima Centauri b. And it could be the first exoplanet where we find extraterrestrial life. <laughs> Who better to check it out than our interstellar teammate, Chase? Yeah, it's true I've died on every exoplanet I visited, but this time will be different. Your death count is well above average. Yeah, yeah, but uh, Proxima Centauri B has to work out. It's gonna work out. It's literally so close to Earth that I could DoorDash my tuna pizza order, like regular. Plus, the whole system is moving closer to Earth, so in 30,000 years, this whole thing is going to be three light years away. Uh, the bad news is, after another few thousand years, Proxima Centauri b will move further away from Earth, and HH Andromeda will become Earth's closest star, besides the Sun. And unfortunately, that star doesn't have any planets. Ugh, why do you have to be such a bummer all the time? Even though Proxima Centauri b is in the closest star system to us, it's still far away. If you left Earth today, you'd reach the Alpha Centauri star system in some 165,000 years, give or take. Oh, look, we're almost there. You, you can see all three stars from here. That's right, Proxima Centauri b orbits one star called Proxima Centauri, and this star is part of the Alpha Centauri star system that has not one, not two, but three suns. There's Alpha Centauri a and b, those orbit quite close to each other, and there's Proxima Centauri. So that orbit's much further away, but they're all gravitationally bound together. It's kind of like how Rico and I are two peas in a pod, we're just really close and cool guys together, and Peter... He's just around, you know? And we'd like him to stay all the way over there. Computers have no loyalties or oh. emotional affiliations. Wow, Rico, ouch. Whatever, man, just ugh, initiate landing on Proxima Centauri B. Proxima Centauri b is located in the habitable zone of its host star, but just because it's in the habitable zone doesn't mean it's habitable. Yeah, just because it's in the habitable zone doesn't mean it's habitable, and just because I die on a planet doesn't mean it's not habitable. Keep up, people. Though he could have said it better, Chase isn't wrong. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf star, which makes it very different from the Earth's sun. As a red dwarf, it's much smaller and cooler. It's also a lot more efficient at burning through all of its hydrogen supply. And that means that Proxima Centauri has a lot longer lifespan than the sun. This red dwarf will shine steadily for trillions of years, long after the sun runs out of hydrogen and swells into a red giant. Oh yeah. In five billion years, when all these little earthlings die off because of an apocalyptic sun explosion, I'll be up here chilling like a villain for another four trillion years. Yeah. yeah. Well, Proxima Centauri b might not be the best place to chill. Its star, Proxima Centauri, only gives off about 0.1% of the sun's brightness. But that means that Proxima Centauri b has to orbit much closer to its star to get enough energy to potentially support life. And being too close to a red dwarf star comes with some dangerous consequences. Ugh, don't tell me. The solar flares? I always forget about the solar flares. Uh, that's right. This red dwarf star gives off deadly, unpredictable blasts of extreme radiation. These eruptions carry so much energy that they could strip away the planet's atmosphere. No, no, why, why, no? Why does everything always have to have a downside? No! Oh, why can't life just be good for 
once. Ultraviolet bursts from the Red Dwarf Star strip electrons from the particles in the planet's atmosphere. As more and more negative electrons escape into space, they pull the positive ions with them too. This constant escape act strips away most of the atmosphere, leaving the planet with barely any gas to hold on to. Well, if that's true, this might not be that habitable after all. Rico, let's get an atmospheric reading. Sampling. Calculating. Thin atmosphere detected. Trace amounts of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrogen. All right, well, let's uh, explore a little. See if we can find some water, maybe uh, a place to build a shelter. I can still turn this rock into a home. Proxima Centauri B has another dark secret. It's tidally locked with its star, which means the planet rotates at the exact same rate that it orbits around Proxima Centauri. Only one side of Proxima Centauri B is facing its star, and that side is forever exposed to light. The other side, shrouded in endless darkness. Well, that's pretty dramatic, right? to choose my spot carefully. Do I want to be a lecherous creature of the night or a wholesome daytime guy? Uh... All year round seasonal depression or chronic sunburn? Partied up rave style or read a book sometimes? Uh... Tough one. <sighs> oh man, this is tough. Um... Oh, I know, I'll live in the Terminator zone. The Terminator Zone is the area between the day side and the night side of a planet. Earth has one too, but it's constantly moving. On a tidally locked planet like this one, the Terminator Zone stays in place. It should have a more moderate temperature and easy access to both sides of the planet. It may also be where I can find water. And don't even get me started on the fact that the Terminator Zone is the most habitable place on this whole planet. Just doesn't make sense! Terminator Zone. Hasta la vista, baby. Who is your daddy? What does he do? Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! Arrived at the Terminator Zone. <sighs> the Earth's Terminator, or Twilight Zone, stretches around 60 kilometers. Now, if Proxima Centauri B has a thin atmosphere, its Twilight Zone would be a little smaller. Still good enough to build my shelter. All right, let's get to work. <sighs> I'm making all of this radiation proof. You know, with the amount of UV this guy's blasting off, we have to insulate everything. Of course, no one has ever been to Proxima Centauri B to confirm if it has an atmosphere and what that atmosphere is like. To find out the atmosphere of distant planets, scientists use a method called transit spectroscopy. When a planet crosses in front of its star, some of the star's light passes through the planet's atmosphere. By studying the changes in that light, astronomers can determine which gases are present in a planet's atmosphere. And we can do that from Earth. It's pretty cool. But transit spectroscopy doesn't work on all exoplanets, and it doesn't work for Proxima Centauri b because this exoplanet doesn't transit its star in a way we can study it from here. If Proxima Centauri b doesn't have an atmosphere, well, it could have a surface temperature of minus 40 degrees Celsius. If it does have an atmosphere, well, then it could be as warm as 30 degrees Celsius. This would be great news, because that would mean that Proxima Centauri b could sustain liquid water on its surface. And where there's liquid water, there could be life. Oh man, this is, this is hard work. I'm getting really hot in here. I'm, I'm gonna take a quick trip over to the night zone, you know, cool off a little bit, have myself a little cocktail. See if there's any space ladies over there.
<laughs> okay, uh, well, I, I cooled off. I, um, I don't know where I am. It's super dark over here, and I can't see, uh, anything. Um, Rico, can you direct me back to the Terminator Zone, please? The Terminator Zone is five kilometers north. Okay, which way is north, Rico? I, I can't see anything. Which way is north, Rico? I don't have a map. I can't see anything. There's no rocks. There's no sun. Which way is north, Rico? You know, I'm gonna reprogram you. When I get back to the spaceship, I'm gonna make you not such a loser. You know what Rico probably stands for? Really annoying. Um, help? Anyone? Rico? Peter? Ugh. Even he's not answering? All right, guys, get in the comments. Figure out which way is north, okay? I can tell you that this way, this way isn't north, so. So help. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it looks like we lost chase to the darkness of Proxima Centauri B, which is too bad. He doesn't actually come back unless he dies. <laughs> oh god, I made it. Oh, I thought I was doomed back there, stuck to wander in some sick cosmic purgatory for all my life. Oh, I need to take some sort of like daytime mental health break. Rico, get me my relaxing chair. He should have stayed in the Terminator zone. A blast like that straight to the face? The heat and radiation would cook your insides in a second. Looks like Proxima Centauri B isn't as promising of an exoplanet. But don't worry, Chase will be back. He always comes back. Where should he go to next? Well. How about the most underrated dwarf planet in the solar system, Pluto? Well, that's a story for another What If.